My name is Ilya, I come from Ukraine, and uh, basically now I'm, uh, I've been for some uh, time in Poland, and uh, I have uh, already developed two computer games. It's a puzzle adventure, it's a quest game, uh, I don't know, whatever you call it. Uh, I have no prior experience in uh, programming. To be honest, I don't have it even now. Uh, my game is still not released on Steam because uh, I would say it's quite um, a unique case because it's now it's a B2B game. So I'm using it uh, to conduct virtual team buildings with uh, different companies where people actually connect to my game and play with each other, like in teams of five. So basically it already generates profit. Uh, we have already covered all our costs. So I think now it's like plus $30,000 that we have earned and we still didn't release on Steam. So I think it's a good story. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, in any case, I'm already in plus, but uh, yeah, now we're preparing the, the single player for Steam and other consoles. And um, what I will do, uh, I will today tell you basically about my journey, my experience in game development, because I never had experience with that before. So I will show you the ways how I actually came from like having, no, actually not even having an idea, but thinking, okay, what can I do and what, what I should in my do, do in my life? And then with like being in this, in this industry. So this is me two years ago, happy, fulfilled, excited with, I would say, I think maybe under thousand dollars on my account, but you cannot see it from my face because I'm super happy. I quit my job for six months. I didn't do anything. I was developing my game and I was super enthusiastic to launch it because not only that I wanted it to be successful, but I needed money. Uh, so, um, and eventually uh, it started it started moving so this is uh, how the game looks like today so this is like a screenshot but i, I will show you like a, a real demo and actually we will play all together with you uh so first i will start briefly about uh, telling about all the steps and then i will focus more on the coding aspect but coding for non-developers so i mean somebody like myself so i have an idea of making a game. I don't know what to do, but basically in these steps, I will show you what to do. So first of all, can you raise hands who do not have any programming experience? So who doesn't know how to code? Okay, not much. And uh, who would say that they're like, uh, okay, who works as a developer? So who knows how to really hard code? Okay, what, who are the rest? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> We'll know that later. So basically, those are the uh, phases that I identified. I don't know how it is in classic. I know maybe there are some other ones, but for me, it was those. And we'll just quickly go through each uh, through each uh, through each stage. Um, yeah, I think we'll uh, we'll now we'll move it around. But uh, yeah, oh, it should be okay. I think now or not. Yeah, good, cool, cool. Thanks. So uh, we're starting with the idea. So it was, uh, at, I think, the very middle of a COVID when there was a lockdown and, you know, um, me and my wife, we were sitting in our apartment. And my wife was super uh, frightened of catching a COVID. Maybe because of that, we, we never had the COVID. <laughs> but basically, we didn't go out. And I'm like, you know, super social. Uh, you know, I always go out with my friends, but because I cared of my wife, I couldn't go out. So basically I thought, okay, how can I entertain myself? And uh, I started looking for some online games. Oh, of course, I think, you know, the story of our COVID entertainment started with, you know, online drinking with friends, but we got pretty bored with that at some point. And uh, we found some detective game, like an online game for several players online. So we, we started playing it. It was a disaster. I mean, it was super boring, not interesting. But at that point, I understood, wow, but it's possible. We are like sep in separate cities in or in separate places, but we are all together in this imaginary world like for one hour. And that's what brings us together. So where is our attention? There we are. So we forget about the physical. And so I can make it way better. So I thought I had this brilliant idea. And I did nothing like maybe for another two weeks when my wife said, okay, so you you, you're telling me that you can do it way better. Why don't you start doing? And I thought, well, you know, I didn't quit my job to do some like, you know, detective games. I want to change the world. But hey, before you know how to change the world, maybe you will start developing at least something. 
And I thought, okay, why not? And I started thinking, okay, so a game, where to start? So you basically start with idea or with a plot. So I knew that it would be a detective. So I thought, okay, so detective, what comes into mind? Sherlock Holmes, like a super intelligent guy. Wow, this British uh, connoisseur. I know nothing about Britain uh, and I don't want to copy him. So I you know I started like fantasizing and, and I ended up with uh, actually my own story because I come from like a very small Ukrainian, uh, well, no, it's, I, I actually come from, from Kyiv, but it's a very small like district of Kyiv, not very, it's a bit jumpy area. So uh, you can meet different uh, freaking people over there uh, and, and it's uh, a bit scary. So I don't know, maybe because of that, I imagine that my detective story would be in such a neighborhood and the detective would be completely opposite to Sherlock Holmes. So Sherlock Holmes is like super intelligent, you know, and fancy. And my guy, my guy would be like an ordinary security guard from a supermarket. Why not? And actually that was the idea and that was like the point. Okay, so this is something fun about him. So you emphasize the guy. So he's not flawless. He has a lot of drawbacks, you know, this guy, uh, and it's already fun. So I started doing that, but when I started evol evolving it, I understood that um, uh, I actually may sell it already to the companies as team building while I'm developing it. And I understood that my clients would be IT companies because they're okay with playing virtual and uh, team buildings. So I sort of said, okay, so this is a supermarket security guy who wanted to become a quality assurance engineer. So he like a bit evolved. And now, actually, uh, I have deleted the supermarket security guy. So now he's a QA engineer who was laid off because of AI took his job. So, I mean, uh, and now I have two separate games, which one would be about the security guard and the second one uh, about the QA engineer. Because, you know, when you, when you try to combine everything at once, in one, it doesn't work. So then I thought, okay, so what's happened? So what's the robbery, the killing, the murder, what's... Um, and I've encountered this thing. Actually, I never knew that. There are like, in the whole world, there are only 36 dramatic situations. So like any movie, any book, any situation in life can be dropped down to this 36. And my God, I don't know, some French guy, George Polti, uh, sort of like found it out in 1895. My God, I mean, what a boring life we live. Uh, I, when I in investigated those, I actually found that, you know, nine out of 36 happened because of love. So I thought, yeah, that, then I need to have a, a love, love line in my quest as well. But I decided to, to make it humorous and, you know, so like lighthearted. Like so I decided that it would be a robbery. But I mean, if you, if you lack ideas for quests or like side quests or mini quests, here you are, 36. Uh, another thing that I understood, so, okay, there should be conflict. Conflict is very important, and the more conflicts you have, the better, the spicier they are, the better. And uh, you always need to have this uh, idea how to how the um, main character evolves through his, like, inner conflict with himself. So he wants to become, like, I don't know, a QA engineer, but he works as a security guard in a supermarket. That's lousy. It's his in ex internal conflict. External, like, with his family or society. So... I mean, this is just a quick hint, the more the better. Uh, dramatic structure, because in a quest game you want to have a very involving plot so that people like, you know, play your game, like read the books. Uh, you, you have this all this classic dramatic structure, but make sure to remember that in computer games, like 90% of uh, everything happens on this stage. So the rise, climax is usually the final boss fight. And it's like, I don't know, five minutes uh, credits or something. Uh, some, some screenplay tips that I use. So uh, don't let players get what they want very easily, you know, try it so that, like, okay, I now know who did the robbery, but then, oh, it unfolds that it wasn't that person. Uh, PDPT is uh, sort of, it's like, a, I think it's a Latin or Greek word uh, coming from, I don't know, some Aristotle or somebody. So this is uh, something that happens occasionally and uh, completely changes the landscape. So do that, raise the stakes. Uh, have some hooks that, that um, sort of like grab attention. And uh, what I have in my game, I have aha and haha moments. Aha is like when you solve a riddle and you think, wow, what an intelligent guy I am. And you have like dopamine's boost. And then you need to relax. Then you have some joke or, you know, funny things so you can relax and just uh, laugh at it. And then again, you have to have aha. So you need to make sure that your plot 
catches the attention for all the time. Uh, text, just quickly, how I created the text, because I really, I'm sort of like in copywriting, so writing for me is really easy, but for those who struggle with it, I strongly suggest using ChatGPT and Google Bard. They're like super brilliant. I mean, you can uh, write something lousy and they will do it. Um, for localization, you can use this Ludwig Guru. This is very good for English. And Notion, uh, this, is how, this is how the uh, character creation stage looked like. So this is just for you to, to know, uh, this is a very good software to keep track of anything. And I used it to develop my game. Uh, sound, uh, here should be the photo, how we did the sound. Uh, basically, so first FFF, friends, fools, and family. So basically what we did, my wife, my parents, we uh, voiced over all the uh, characters. Uh, you know, in our wardrobe, I took, like I watched several videos on YouTube, and they explained how to make an audio studio with your iPhone and the wardrobe and some pillows. And I mean, yeah, of course it's not the ideal sound, but I would say it's like 90% ideal. And when you do that, like the first iteration of a game, well, at least in my case, it was enough. So we didn't pay anyone, you know. AI, uh, I wouldn't say it's good enough yet, but seeing the progression in the recent like six months, pff, my God, in 2024, you can fire all the voice actors and just do it with AI, I guess. And Fiverr, where you can find people like for 10 bucks voicing over anyone. Art is another big thing. Um, so basically, for the first version of my game, I found a guy who had uh, like a block, a set of his characters, like 60, I guess. So I bought it from him and then I used Photoshop, you know, to remix them. For my second one, I hired Mid Journey AI, 30 bucks per month, commercial rights included. I mean, totally game changing for us. Uh, I will show you the graphics. I mean, I think it's, it's super. Of course, you need to invest some time. You need to play with prompts but it's super good. Uh, it can be funny as well. So you can see this. Uh, so this is generated by Midjourney AI. So I don't know, this guy has some troubles with his arms. Uh, those were the prompt. So this is the style of this uh, artist that I liked. Portrait of a pretty nine-year-old girl in a summer dress. And here you are. So yeah, of course you need to spend time and re-roll re in it. Uh, to get 70, Pictures, it's like characters, locations, uh, um, yeah, mostly that. We used to reroll 2,500 uh, images. It, it took us like, I would say, two weeks. But I mean, 30 bucks and we have a limitless opportunity, you know, to change them. So it, it's great. Okay, and now the coding part, the main part. So um, now I will show you the demo, how it works. Um, I will then tell you an interesting story about. So this is a tool, it's called Twine. And this is a tool for creating interactive stories. So actually it's not uh, made for making computer games, but people started using it and uh, it proved to be cool. So just at a glance, so it's a so open source tool. So you don't, have, you don't pay for it with a large base of different plugins and modules already developed and free. Uh, it has a visual editor uh, at the con code base is JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Uh, then you can use variables, conditional logic, images, sounds, etc. I will show it to you. As an output, you will get an HTML file, which is like really small and you can upload it, I, I mean, on the web more or less anywhere. And it's free to use, including the commercial rights. So what's it good for? Non-fiction essays, for example, maybe you're writing a book. People do that with it. Role-playing games, uh, puzzle adventures, this quest games, visual, interactive visual novels. And uh, if you want to just a tool to compose dialogue trees, it's way more powerful than Excel or Google Sheets. Yejeme. Okay, so now I will uh, open the, the, uh, the visual editor and show you Show you how it looks like. Okay, let me see. You don't see it. Uh, okay, so basically, this is how uh, it it uh, it looks like. So, um, give me a second. I will actually duplicate my screen because uh, I, I cannot see it in here, and I will need to to write it. So, uh, arrangement, display, mirroring. Yeah, 
chance it, it will give a sec. Uh, it, it may for now it may look uh, a bit uh, complicated, but uh, so basically you can create a story is like a separate game. Let's say so I have different versions, so it's here. Uh, so basically you can create a new one, but we will start uh, from the template that I have. So uh, this basically how it looks like. So it has a huge screen, so I will make it, it zoom in. So uh, let's imagine we have only this part. So it's basically a grid with blocks. So you can create a passage, a passage is a block, and here you can add some text or code. So what we will do is let's, uh, let us all together develop a small game right now. So it starts with the start. Um, so let's start with idea. Um, actually, I have one. So let's imagine we have uh, an indie developer who came to GIC conference and wants to pitch his or her game. So uh, do we have a volunteer? Does somebody of you have a game that he, he or she wants to pitch to investor? Can you raise a hand? Nobody has a game? I mean, everybody has a game, no? Okay, anyone has an idea of a game? Okay. What is your name? Laura. Laura, okay. So we have Laura. And what is the name of your game? Can, can you spell it? Uh, U A R T. U R like this? Yeah. Super. So, Laura, uh, there she there she is at GIC 2023 wanting to pitch her you are game. Super, so this is the first uh, passage that we created. Let's see if we can see it. I, I, I press play, it automatically launches uh, the browser. So it's super easy to test, to check, and we see, okay. Uh, just a few words about this. So I'm already using some presets from my game. Mm, so especially this sidebar menu, this is a more, more or less typical for the Twine. So we'll have like already installed some modules. We'll have a map, a log of text, inventory, and some money. So this is actually what we just created. Okay, looks nice. Then we go back and let's, uh, let's us uh, do the following. Okay, so uh, Laura is there. So I don't know have, uh, if, uh, yeah, so uh, she walks. Yeah, she, no, she uh, looks around and uh, sees business lounge. And here we do the first command. Uh, I, I will just use, you don't have to remember, it's all in the cookbook in manual, so it's super easy, but just for you to see. So we do uh, double brackets and we can say, go to business lounge. So this is our first uh, command. Let's see what happens. So we play again. Now we see this go to, and uh, the business launch is not shown because it already created a separate passage for it. So we were here in the start and we are now in the business launch. If we go to it, we see nothing. Does not exist. Yeah. So we can check. Yeah. Because nothing is here. So, yeah. So what we do next, I have some, some, um, some commands that I prepared. So let me just use some of those. I will uh, explain it to you. So, uh, business lounge. Yeah, let's let's use something of this. So, business lounge passage. So, we can use uh, a picture. Put it in it. Uh, we can put any picture in here, and actually, we can put any media for that. So, for this, we will use uh, this command. So, basically, this is uh, to put an image, and this is like an image that I found uh, in uh, in internet. So, let's just use it. So let's, let's see, and I have this, a room uh, where all VIPs and celebrities hang out. So let's see what happens. Uh, the passage business launch doesn't exist. Wow, what happened? Maybe we need to call the programmer. Oh, yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, it's because of this, so yeah. I will just uh, copy the other one. Yeah, because I used the extra space bar, it didn't open, so I'll do it like this. We will copy the text from here. I will delete this one. This one is correct. Hopefully it goes, okay, play. 
enter the business strategy. Yay, we're here. We have the image already. Er <laughs> cool. Uh, and then, uh, th so this is the first logic that we start. But of course, we, we should have somebody in the business launch. So I suggest, now we go to this block and here I will add a sample for characters. So this is how we can uh, in, uh, put, uh, put people in here. So I will use some, some presets, uh, but I mean, it's super easy because you can copy it uh, from anywhere. So uh, this preset means that we'll have two characters in here. And let's put the first one. So, I, so uh, let me just quickly show it to you. So uh, this one says that there will be two characters, C2. Then char box is a box where the first character would be. Image source is actually an image for it to, to paste it. This is the name. So uh, let's say that we see an investor. Uh, then this is variable how he is called. So let's call him investor and you should have this dollar sign and we can talk to him. So basically I need to create another passage because you remember the square brackets in this command. So it would be investor passage and basically that's it. And um, what is uh, uh, in the business lounge as well? I've been there. Yes, there's a coffee. So we put coffee in here, we put the second uh, variable coffee in here, uh, talk uh, coffee, but you usually don't talk to coffee, right? So let's put grab, grab a coffee. Okay, let's see what happened. Okay, so now once again, we're here. Yes, we have it here. So it's already there. Uh, we can make it even better. So we can say coffee. Uh, Something like this. Or actually a coffee, everybody knows how the coffee looks. Let's uh, uh, reach guy. Let's have a rich guy. Uh, I want, oh, this is very nice. Looks like an investor, right? No, it thinks I'm, I'm a, a copy, copy image link. So yeah, we have an investor here. And we will add, so did you see image source? We're adding it here. Let's see if it's there. Enter business launch, yay, it's there, cool. So now, uh, basically, so uh, um, what I wanted to do, so we have uh, added a variable saying investor equals one. So the system should know that investor is there. So uh, like over here in inventor, so, it, it may look a bit overwhelming, but over here, I will just set a new command, investor to one. So now we should have a conversation with him. Yeah, so it's like super easy. And now the other passage, and we can actually start uh, adding like, you know, any text, image and everything like, like you had it. So basically it's super easy. And now I will show you my game. So using this, so basically, this is how a game looks like, I mean. So you can see it has, I will zoom out. So it has way more blocks, but it's the whole logic. So basically, I don't know, maybe like this. So this is the whole game. Uh, I don't know, so let me see how many blocks. Um, story statistics. Uh, one passage is one block. So it's 138 passage, 38 passage for the whole game. So it took me, the first game took me like, yeah, I don't know, maybe four months to develop. But the second, because I reuse it, Took me only one month. So the speed, of course, when you have the story. So uh, let's play a game. Um, so you can see fully what you can do with it. Um, office quests. So let me see if this is a, if this, this one is in English. Um, yeah, it should be English. So. Yay, okay guys and girls, this is a bit intimate story. It's about leaked nudes. So we have a story about a guy who worked in a game dev company and uh, there was some, something that some, something happened that you will know right now and we will need to help him. So first of all, let's test sound. So another, as I said, uh, I used like uh, the help of my friends and the family to voice over. So I'm, let's check the sound. Can you uh, turn it like uh, more, 
significantly. Can try? Holy guacamole. Don't know what that is, but I think somebody told something. Cool, then we can hear the sound, that's great. Okay, so we're starting. You approach office printer to grab your, your reports and notice someone else's recent printouts lying there. You set them aside and take a random look at what's have been printed. It's a photo of your recruiter, Nora, but it's not the usual of its stuff. It looks like something from OnlyFans. Before you can fully recover from the shock, Nora herself rushes up to the printer. So basically, we're in office, wanted to pick some printouts, and there we go. So let's raise the jaw and awkwardly say hi. She will tell us something. Oh my goodness, give it back to me. Oh, how embarrassing. But it's not what you think. Oh, give me a second, I'll explain everything. Oh, these photos don't mean I'm a pervert. It's an act of protest. I'm an animal rights activist. And we were planning a campaign to support homeless dogs. So to attract attention, the girls from our center took nude photos. Of course, faces would be blurred. But a few days ago, someone hacked my account and got access to all the photos. <gasps> Later, I received a message from the bastards that they have my photos and that I should wait for further instructions. A moment ago, they sent me a new email saying that I should come to a copying machine and pick up a surprise. Ah, oh, looks like you were here a bit earlier. I don't understand who is doing it and why. You've got a sharp mind. Please help me figure this out. If these photos get leaked, I can bear it. But my father, you know, he is a public person. This will be a real blow for him. It must be someone from the office. Otherwise, how would they have gained access to the printer? All right, so this was the intro. So basically, and we can go to launch zone. And since we are detectives, let me put on my detective hat. So we will start. So basically, we are here in the lounge zone. So we have a recruiter, you remember. So it's basically like you reusing all those blocks. And we have a printer. So I don't know, let's take a closer look. High-tech printer where you secretly printed your manga comics. Okay, we can enter some password. So this is another block of code that I publicly reused. So I don't know, any guesses? One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. Okay, password is incorrect. It looks like we will have to figure it out somewhere. Um, I suggest we go to a map. So basically a map is a picture with the text blocks on it. I mean, in terms of how we did it. So, and here we have some locations. So any suggestions where should we start with? You tell me, I go. Director's office, let's go there. Okay, uh, so Mr. V, yeah, and we have an active dialogue with him. Uh, Guru of Seagull Management loves to come by, say a few random words about Jira and fly away. Okay, let's say hello to him. Oh, and here's our champion of missing deadlines. I still haven't seen that time tracking report from you for the last week. You know, I've been having some laid back conversation with ChatGPT asking about ways to optimize costs. And guess what? It thinks we should check if our team is oversized, especially the QA department. Oops, we're from the QA department. Uh, another thing that you can add to it, so for example, in our case, this is another module of code. So we can have all the texts logged in. So for example, if, if a player misheard something or wants to go back, he can check it and it's, uh, he can use context search to find words. Okay, so basically not much in here. So you see the dialogue disappears, so you don't have to re-hear re re it for, the, for another time. So this is another command. Okay, not much happened. Any other ideas where to go, we go next? Open space, yeah, let's do that. A place where everyone can listen to your calls, spy on your monitor and smell your food. Okay, DevOps and cleaner. I don't know what DevOps means. So let's let's try with him. Your colleague DevOps, it seems that even your boss doesn't know what he's responsible for. Okay, let's let's say hi to him. Hey buddy, have you heard this recent joke about programmers? Listen up. How many software developers does it take to change a light bulb? 
Uh, mom, uh, that's a hardware problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hardware. Oh, well, that's not not super funny. Uh, cleaner. Okay, say so let's say hello to her. They say COVID weak in the economy, but for me it was a blessing in disguise. Less people in the office means less cleaning for me. Oh, makes sense. But no clues, so we're, 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 looks like we're lost, no, nothing happens. Any other ideas where to go, where we can find some info about the printer? Server room. Server room, yeah, let's do that. Okay, the system administrator. Ask him to remind you how to use the office printer, yay, good clue. I've explained it to you a hundred times. Each employee has their own ID and password. Once you log in, you can see your recent print jobs and launch a new one. It's all straightforward, Kuba. Instead of distracting me, you'd better tell me how to checkmate our DevOps, because I've been chasing him for the last 20 minutes. Okay, we can take a look at his display. So this is another command. And this is the first riddle that we have. So basically this guy plays chess and we need to help him to checkmate the black ones with white ones in one move. So any Kasparovs in this room? Any guesses? So we need to name the figure which we will use and which one move, so in which square we will put it to checkmate the black king. Uh, so queen, this one a2, to which one? Uh, let's check it. G8. Yay! Pfft. Super. That was super easy for you. Okay, let's do that. Whoa! Take that! Man, you're a real legend. Thanks a lot. Oh, and speaking of that printer thing, here's a list of accounts with their IDs. Might come in handy. Okay, so he gave something to us and there's another code module that you can publicly reuse, it's inventory. So you don't have to program it by yourself, it's already there. So, oh, actually we have the nudes with us as well. Ah, uh, we cannot take a look, sorry. Uh, so there's a list of employees that this sysadmin uh, guy gave to us and we see some um, logins. Uh, we don't have any passwords, but we already know the logins. So basically if we will find the password, we will correlate the logging with the password. So it's it's a good point. So this is the first thing that we got. Any other ideas where to go next? There's not much, much left. Dumpster. Dumpster, of course. The door is locked and the place smells like something died. Mm, not much in here. Any other ideas? Coffee point. Coffee point. Always a good idea. Okay, we have an office manager in here. Your charming office manager, you know her closer than the others, but you both agreed not to make it public at work. Oh, okay, lovebirds. Oh, there you are. I've told you a million times that recycling is everyone's responsibility, and you still haven't passed the test about sorting garbage. I don't know who put these paper scraps in the plastic bin today, but now it's your responsibility. Go and throw them away into the right bin. We'll talk more about this at home. Okay, so she gave something to us. Okay, so it's a piece of paper, but it's only a thorn, torn piece of paper. So it's it looks like there are some riddles, but we have only half of it. So it looks like we need to find the other half. Uh, where do you think we can get the other half? Dumpster. Uh, the door is locked, but good point, but the door is locked. Who may have the key? Cleaner, exactly. So now you see there was no dialogue with her, but the system understands because I used conditional. So if you find a piece of paper, then open the next dialogue with cleaner. So I mean, it's like only one line of code. It's super easy. Yes, tell her that you've accidentally threw something important and if she has the key to the dumpster. Yeah, they are in the dumpster on the first floor. Here is the key. 
And don't forget to wash your hands thoroughly after. Covid may be gone, but germs are still a thing. Yay, we have the key. Let's run to the dumpster. Trash bin, yeah, we've opened it to come closer. Don't tell me you're about to climb in there. Well, you know, sometimes we have to do it. Okay, after a 10 minute search, you finally find it. We check inventory. Indeed, we have found the second piece. And it looks like it is a riddle in which we will find the number. So, three riddles. How many hobbits were members of the Fellowship of the Ring? Three, four, five, yeah, depends, yeah. <laughs> four. Then, logical sequence. Any mathematicians here? So 77, 49, 36, 18. Which number goes next? Nine. Nine. <laughs> no. <laughs> eight, exactly. Seven by seven, 49. Four by nine, 36. One by eight, eight, exactly. And the last, to which hotel room do Arctic monkeys want to come back? Whatever it means. Does anybody know what Arctic monkeys is? I'm going back to Fire 5. Yeah, this is from the song, so you can Google. So Arctic monkeys are a band, so thanks. Uh, they are singing that they're going to a room 505. Okay, so we have the password. Let's rush to the lounge room. Take a closer look, then voila, the system welcomes user A01 upon successful login and you check the latest files printed and stumble upon Nora's nudes. And we have the printer ID list, A01 is the damn god director. I always knew it. And basically we now go to here and we have the final conversation with him. So let's do that. Provide evidence that the, he blackmailed the recruiter. You sneaky devil. I'm paying you salary and you stabbing me in the back. I knew I should have burned that note with a password. You're probably all high and mighty now, thinking you've exposed the maniac. But guess what? You're that wrong. I couldn't care less about those naked pics. I wanted to blackmail Nora to make her convince the Suleimanov guy her father and our landlord to lower the rent. We're tight on cash now, but why would you care? Anyway, let's get to the chase. You've got zero evidence, and I don't think anyone would want to air our dirty laundry in public. I'll delete the files, but don't start celebrating just yet. To cut the costs, I'll have to lay off one employee. And in fact, We've got only two candidates, you or Nora. And since you're such a clever lad, the decision is on you. Oops. Okay, so somebody who have to leave the company. So let's vote. Who's, uh, who thinks that we should ourselves say that we're not working in this company? Uh, okay, maybe tricky. And who chooses that Nora girl? <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Actually, you are in minority, so we choose ourselves. Working with jerks goes against your principles. Sherlock Holmes would never do that. You walk confidently towards the exit, slam the door behind you and feel elevated from making the right decision. Yes, now you will have to look for a new job, but it doesn't dim your joyful mood. The thought crosses your mind that you long deserve the break and this newbound freedom should be celebrated with a trip to somewhere warm, sunny and the sea. To Vlohe. Okay, so basically this was a small uh, like game that you can develop uh, on this. So my, my original games last like two plus hours because if uh, your game lasts less than two hours and you release it on Steam, the player has the right to refund the money. So he says like, I want my money back. They check if he played less than two hours and they give them back to him. So if your game is less than two hours, anyone can refer. So, so I made my game two, two hours and half uh, and 30 minutes. So basically this is how our games look. So the, uh, those were like the server room. So you can see that the, there's this uh, system administrator. You have two conversations with him. You have a picture in here. So basically, uh, 
and here's like a map with all those locations. So basically, once you copy those tag, those code blocks from Twine, then you can just simply reuse it, and it works like that. Okay, and some finishing finishing thoughts and slides. Um, okay, uh, what you have. Okay, it sinks a bit. So what, what you, ca you, ca you can do with this twine. So you can have, as I said, uh, inventory. You can roll the dice. And usually it's the main mechanic for a simple combat. So you can even have an RPG fighting monsters. Uh, then you can have different input fields. So like for the riddles that I've showed to you. Uh, you can have health point meter, like any, any like things that can be added or distracted. Uh, the, um, I don't remember the word. So it can be either plus or minus. You can have timer and many, many more. So there are, as I said, there are a lot of libraries that you can reuse. You can just copy. And for example, in my case, uh, my partner is a developer. So for example, like he writes some extra code on JavaScript, but I mean, then I myself can easily, you know, put everything back and forth. Uh, uh, th th those are the links to some really nice examples of using Twine for games and actually one of them, the first one, 80 Days, were, was uh, named by the Times the game of the year. So can you imagine somebody using this uh, uh, you know, super simple tool made a game that was the game of the year. So I mean you don't have to pay anything. Ooh, I, I'm, it saves you like super dramatic costs. And then some just closing thoughts on um, actually making a game. So uh, these are my mom and dad. They're like uh, 60 plus. So I use them to play uh, to do play tests because I think if they get how to control the game, if they understand it, then anyone would do it. So basically, of course, you need play tests to check the logic, find bugs, uh, to de de define the level of uh, complexity of puzzles, uh, whether you want to give tips or anything, game duration, of course, and the motions, because in my uh, part, it was crucial because, uh, as I said, I'm using it now as a virtual team buildings, and we need, of course, people to, to make fun of it, you know, to like it. So for me, that, that was super important. And uh, the previous to last slide, some closing thoughts. So first of all, uh, my biggest suggestion would be start, if you have an idea, start doing at least something. Uh, I heard this super great story from the uh, founder of SimCity on his uh, YouTube or somewhere. So SimCity, you know this game when you build a, a city, of course. Uh, actually, the idea of that game was a bit different for him. So he wanted to create a game when you fly a helicopter and actually bombard the city. I mean, so that was his original idea. But for that, he understood that he needs to develop a city. So he needs to build like an engine to develop the, to, to construct the city. And when he started doing it, he understood, I don't want to bombard the city. I want to build this city. So actually let me create out of this uh, engine to create a city, just a game, and it was a super success. So, I mean, if he wouldn't start doing anything, he wouldn't come up with this idea. Second, uh, I always, you know, when I talk to different indie developers, uh, they like, you know, uh, start uh, quietly telling me their idea, because, you know, someone may hear and steal it. <laughs> My God. I mean, uh, I checked the uh, last statistics, last year on Steam, there was 11,000 games launched and only like 20% of them got more than 50 reviews. So, I mean, 8,000 was like a, a disaster. I mean, the ideas are everywhere. Nobody wants to steal your idea. It, maybe someone wants, but I mean, it does nothing. Because, for example, in my case, when I started telling my friends, okay, I have the, the idea of developing a game, but I don't know how to code. And I started asking different people, like, okay, so which programming language do I use? And one guy said, oh, um, actually, maybe you can use the, this tool called Twine because he, something like two months ago, needed a developer library or something called Twide. So with a different letter, like not Twine, but Twide. But he mistaken it to Twine, accidentally went on the website. And for whatever reason, he memorized this software. And when I asked him, he said, why not you use it? I mean, it's a magic. Uh, it cut my cost and, and actually enabled me to, to launch the game. Uh, flexibility is a must. So first I thought, okay, I will release a game on Steam. But when I 
eventually started doing it, I wanted to test it. So I invited my friends to do a play test. So we called, we had a call in Zoom and started playing and they enjoyed it. So I understood that people can already pay me for like hosting this play test. So uh, the other way around. And now at, at this moment, this is uh, for me the main business for this game. So Basically, I come to a company, they say, okay, we need a virtual team building. I say, let's play my game. They pay $20 per person. So we play two hours. That's how, how long the game lasts for now. I, you know, check and take the notes, what I need to, to improve. So it's like a reverse play testing. They do play tests, uh, get enjoyment, get fun. Uh, I get money and I get insights on what to improve. Everybody's happy. I mean, so uh, I never thought that it would start as a B2B game. So, but maybe your game can be released in also in some other way before you release on Steam, on consoles or mobiles. So, uh, I mean, be, uh, be flexible. And, and the, the last uh, thing would be, you know, more, more like a philosophical. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, in this... Uh, world where everybody it tries to achieve something so you know you know you run as fast as you can uh, you lose your breath uh, your kidney starts to ache but you need to run even faster uh, i don't think this is how it should be i think it should be relaxed have fun and do what you like and they should pay it for you i think this how this world was created not through pain achieving but doing what you're best at and the money comes, so it's like a, like a coin. So it's just the other side of the coin. You do what you like, and the other side of the coin is, is money and like self-realization. So basically the idea is like, um, my concept is that everyone are a unique puzzle, puzzle piece. And you just have to identify in which picture you need to fit it. Because there in the world, there is definitely a, a space that ideally uh, your puzzle would fit. Because if you try, you know, to go to work to some companies that you don't like, your puzzle doesn't fit. So you have to push it really hard. You know, you have to go to this work, you have to struggle, you wait for this weekend or for Friday to get a beer and nobody's happy. So, I mean, identify yourself because in game development, you, you're like a scissor knife when you're an indie developer. So I did uh, like art, I did sound, I did game design, I did uh, like coding, I did everything, but I'm not best at everything. So my favorite part is creating stories. So I wouldn't outsource it even if I have like millions of dollars. I would do stories myself, but everything else, please. You are professionals, take it, I pay you, everybody's happy. So basically that's, I think the hardest thing because when you're a small indie studio like us, two people, so you, you, you don't have too much money, so you, you do everything. But you have only 24 hours a day and you can not do everything. So basically the idea is to identify your strong points and focus, uh, focus all your attention there. And I think this is the key. First I wrote success, but I think happiness. Because it basically I think maybe it's the, the same word. So uh, basically this is it. This is a um, QR code that leads to, to my website if you want to check it out. And there's because we haven't uh, created a Steam page, we're still under review. Uh, I don't know why they say that there is no such a, a street address in Wroclaw where I live right now. So they like uh, require me to send uh, like an agreement with the landlord or something. So I already did it. So I'm waiting for for approval um, and hopefully I can set up my page and do the wish list and everything. But over there you have like um, a field on that website where you can submit your email and I will. Uh, send you a link to the Steam page once we have it. So basically, thank you very much. Uh, questions, any questions uh, that you may have? Yes. Uh, I'd actually, I can repeat. So how does the multiplayer work? There, there are some games uh, in the multiplayer mode. So mine is not. We use Zoom for that. So basically, the idea is that we have different team broken in breakout rooms and they that's how they play. But I know that there are games, uh, like multiplayer games, created with the Twine engine. And this is the great thing about it because there's a huge community, a lot of materials. And uh, actually, I think maybe I can show it now. Okay, it's on their website. I mean, there are like millions of links that you can uh, use um, and reuse. Yep. So, yeah, maybe microphone would be good. What happens if you choose Nora? <laughs> yeah, so basically that's, uh, 
that's the part uh, of my sales strategy. And for Steam, I want this game, this part, to be a demo, a free demo. So basically, first of all, you would want to think what happens. So maybe this would be another reason for you to buy. But basically what happens is that the main game starts differently depending on your choice. So for example, when the company buys, so they know they have chosen like themselves. So the game starts from finding a job. And with the other scenario, when you choose Nora, uh, so basically, eventually you will quit yourself because like, you know, there are a lot of uh, bad thoughts in your head. Uh, saying that you actually did the wrong thing. But the nice thing is that in the full part of the game, you meet Nora and you can uh, make, you can fulfill a quest to make her uh, sort of like excuse you. So actually it's like a part of this hook. What is, so, you know, people like, okay, what's next? Um, uh, okay, I will pay just to know what's next because you know, it's eating me. So that, that's the idea. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, you mentioned that these games could be the B2B kind of uh, yeah. oriented. Is there a functionality in Twine that allows uh, vote uh, playing, kind of like Twitch plays? So multiple people, people can watch, uh, can vote for the options, and that way you can engage people, uh, especially in remote distributed teams. And so. Yeah, as I said, yeah. So there's uh, there's a way to build a multiplayer game. That's true. To be honest, I haven't researched that yet because sort of, sort of like for for now. Uh, the developer estimated that it would take like, I don't know, maybe $15,000 to invest in it. And for now, like using a Zoom is okay for everyone. So, I mean, I think we will do that, but in a bit later stage. Uh, because for now, they're okay with playing in separate rooms and not seeing each other. And it's way easier for now, for, for us at least. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, how did you find your first clients? Because it must be hard to break through and yeah. then, uh, without any platform and just going directly, did you send emails to people? Or? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks. That, that's a good question. So first of all, my background. So I think you know where we are. So this game, it, it's like a sum of my previous experience that led me to creating it. So for example, for last 10 years, I worked in IT industry, mostly in marketing and PR and events. So I knew quite some people in HR who usually are the decision makers for these events. So what I did in the first round, I came to them uh, saying like, hey guys, you know me, I have created this product for you, this like a 50% discount, just, you know, because I needed to start. Then I started, I asked them for their logos. So I put them on the website. So then it already looks like, ah, okay. So it's not just like an indie guy from the garage. It looks like, oh, this this like company played. So for example, like there's an, um, an international company, EPAM, there are like 15,000 people over there. So as I said, I charged $20 per person. And when uh, they came with the first uh, order, it was like only 10 people. So I, I earned $200. But you know, I already like calculated 15,000 by $20. Woof. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, they never came back, to be honest. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, having their logo is like, you know, like a super uh, credibility. So like, wow, this is the, one of the biggest companies they played. So uh, what I do mainly is that I connect with the uh, HRs through LinkedIn, like saying, hey guys, I, I know that you need some activities for virtual team buildings. Uh, for online team buildings. I have this game. Maybe you would want to connect. After that, they connect. So if they say yes, then I send them like a pitch saying, okay, so this is a game. This is how it works. And let's have a demo. So this is like the second thing. I know that uh, in automobile industry, like the average is th three out of four cars are bought after the test drive. So actually I do like the test drive. So it's a 20 minutes free to play demo. They play, they already fill the, 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 the game, they pay nothing for it. And, and after that, I think like 80% order the game. So this is how it works for me. Uh, how it works especially, so I need to write a lot of people. I, I think I pitched more than 1,000 HRs on LinkedIn with a conversion rate of 30% who um, approved the, um, um, the invitation. And uh, I would say that maybe 20% of those bought, but what happened next, this is like my success uh, news from the last three months. 
So usually I had like uh, one game per week and the average would be like, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 people per game. And uh, somebody from my clients, uh, it looks like there are like a chat, internal chat with HRs. Somebody asked, uh, do you know any providers of online games? And there were my clients who played with me and they started recommending me. So you cannot like give a commercial in that uh, closed group. And now, I mean, I'm, I don't know, I don't, I'm not writing to HRs anymore. They're writing to me right now. And for example, I had like a super success story. Last Friday, I had a record. We had a game for 252 people. So in two hours, I earned like 4,000 bucks. <laughs> Can you imagine? And I mean, and usually it's like if 10 people I earn for those two hours, I earned $200. So I mean, uh, because it was like a super big event. And uh, that's how it works for me. So of course it very much depends, but yeah, usually like you push, you push, you push, and then it starts, uh, starts. But a very important thing is that people do really like it. So I see the players, uh, they are laughing, they, they have nice emotions. And that's why they, my idea is to continue the series of this game with this junior security guard in a supermarket who would be having new stories. And I will do it both for my clients from B2B and new series on Steam. So this is basically the idea of two revenue streams that I want to have. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any question? Cool, guys, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Uh, good luck to you and your great and good errands. <laughs> <laughs>